Right, I'll try not to keep you too long with this video today. Last Wednesday's video overran big style. It's a constant battle trying to sort of think up fresh new ideas for the channel, ideas for videos. I've always thought of this as a motorcycle lifestyle channel rather than just a motorcycle channel. I think it was the beginning of last year I had a go at sort of motorcycle related photography equipment, action cameras, that kind of thing. And most people responded by just not watching it. I think what deep down inside always worries me is that in the end I'll have to resort to trailing around various motorcycle dealerships, test riding different bikes and publishing pointless and inaccurate first impression videos, just like every other channel out there. And the big issue that I have with making that type of video is that you're putting yourself in the pocket of the dealerships and the brand. And if you don't gush over every motorcycle that you test, the availability of motorcycles dries up. Now, there's nothing wrong with that if that's what floats your boat, but I've always considered myself to be an individual. I'm not like everyone else, so I don't do the same things everyone else does. And I'd like to think that this channel has attracted the same sort of personalities. Now, about six or seven weeks ago, I went completely out of the box as far as this channel's concerned, and I made a review on a couple of Seiko automatic watches. Now at first glance this video didn't exactly bomb. It certainly performed a lot better than action camera videos and that kind of thing. And the response that I got from viewers was actually quite encouraging but it took a while for the analytics on my YouTube channel to actually organise themselves so that I could judge properly whether it was worth having a stab at it again. And this time the computer said yes. So here we go. Now, my partner, she says that I'm difficult to buy Christmas presents for. I'm not. Every year she asks me what I would like for Christmas. Every year I say the same thing. Any motorcycle of your choice I'll be more than happy with. And every year she lets me down and buys me socks. Seriously, I don't know why she bothers asking me. Now, she, on the other hand, is really easy to buy for. Basically, anything that sparkles, anything that shiny is sure to be a hit. Now, ever since I bought my first couple of automatic watches, she's expressed an interest in them herself and I thought that sort of thing would make the perfect gift for her this year. So I went onto YouTube on the TV and played one or two YouTube video reviews of watches that I thought might appeal to her. And one in particular caught her eye. One from an obscure but favourite brand of mine. A brand which most of you will probably never have heard of, but it's a brand which has definitely a cult status among watch collectors. It's a brand that has a long history. It's also a brand that has a reputation, quality that way exceeds its price point. A Japanese brand called Orient. Compared to some watch manufacturers, Orion is a new kid on the block, but time is relative and they've just celebrated the 70th birthday. In many ways, they're a typical Japanese company where only the best quality and finest engineering will do. They're owned by Epson, the printer and photocopier people, who coincidentally also own Seiko. These watches are well known in Japan and throughout Asia. But there is no authorised distributorship in the UK, so us British have been losing out. The reason that Orient have become a cult brand is that the quality far exceeds the common asking price. And although the recommended retail price is often very similar to an equivalent Seiko, the can, if you shop around, usually be found heavily discounted. Now, I should say to avoid any confusion, this is a full-sized 40mm man's watch. It's just that my partner prefers larger watches. These days, this style of watch is regarded as a dress watch, and I'm not going to argue with that, but I don't see them as dress watches. This is a very popular watch design from the 1950s, a look that was immortalised by the likes of Longines, the Rolex Explorer and the early Amiga Seamasters. It's an upmarket spin-off from the humble field watch, a champagne-coloured sunburst dial 
very clear legible numbers at 12, 3, 6 and 9 o'clock and just a single date window at 3 o'clock. Instead of the conventional large second hand, it has a separate dial set just above the 6. In fact, the common sort of collector's name for this watch is the Orient Bambino, and this is known as the small second Bambino. This is an automatic self-winding watch, but an upmarket feature is that it does have hand winding so that you won't have any problems starting it if it's been stuck in your sock drawer for a week and it also has hacking which means you can't stop the second hand in order to synchronize your watch accurately both of which are features that the Seikos I showed you a few weeks ago don't have it also has a quick set date facility hand winding is easy and silky smooth and the watch is housed inside a 40mm 316L stainless steel case. It has a polished bezel with the sides brushed, and I have to say the brushing is very fine and luxurious. The lug to lug width is fairly short, so despite being a large watch, it does tend to wear quite small. And it does have a rather oddball 21mm lug width, which can make straps a little bit more difficult to source than with a standard 20 or 22mm. Having said that, Orient straps are generally very good quality. And the strap on this Bambino is no exception. The only thing is, I'm not too keen on the faux crocodile skin look, although I do feel that the colour is glorious. The high quality of the strap does, of course, mean that you're not going to be in any hurry to change it, so you can take your time choosing a replacement for the future. The design and colour of this watch will make it a bit of a strap monster though, so I can imagine it will be a fun pastime sourcing one or two contenders. Now, one of the most interesting things about Orion is they make their own in-house movements, and they are hand-assembled in the Japan factory. And this is no mean feat when you consider that the likes of Tag Heuer and even on occasion Amiga buy their movements in from other manufacturers. And the question of accuracy, I found this to be slightly better than the equivalent Seiko. It is, I believe, a 23 dual movement, and the whole assembly is capped off with a mineral crystal domed on the front with an exhibition case back. The case back is a press-on type, so it is only water resistant to 30 meters, but that's fine for any motorcyclist. Just don't go swimming with it. For me personally, memories of my childhood, this watch design epitomises the 1960s. As I've said, today they're regarded as dress watches, but this design was actually derived directly from the World War II era field watch. A large dial, easy to read in any light, and a slim case that doesn't snag on your clothing or your equipment. Back in the 1950s and 60s, these were not considered to be dress watches, they were tool watches. I remember my dad had a watch with a very similar design to this, and he used it for work, for gardening, and he went out in it. And my recollections are that most of my mate's dads had similar watches too, it was the style of the era. So it's certainly going to look the part with your 1960s style leather jacket, gloves and your modern classic motorcycle. When it comes to gents watches, I don't think you could get any more classic 1960s than this. Now I purchased this watch through Amazon from an authorised Orient dealer in Italy, a company called New Time. It was well under £200 and the nearest equivalent price I could find was over £300. I have no affiliation to this company but I will leave a link in the video description down below. One thing I will say is that I did find with this company, although quite long delivery times are projected, it actually arrived about a week before the earliest projected delivery time. I'm not entirely sure whether that is typical of the service, which was excellent, but it might be worth just sending them an email to confirm whether they can get it to you before Christmas, if that's your aim. The only thing that I don't like about this watch, and it is just a personal thing, is that to my mind, 
it wears just a little bit too small for my eight and a half inch wrists which is a shame because i love it and i would really have liked one for myself i don't know what do you think once again thank you so much for watching this video and in doing so helping to support my channel i really do appreciate it i sincerely hope that you've enjoyed this video and found it useful and if you have please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and don't forget that if you do subscribe don't forget to hit the notification bell and ensure that your notifications are enabled on your account that way you can be informed whenever i upload a new video i will of course be back next week so until then please ride safely and i'll see you soon